essence of glider control. Turning this into that. Mastery level of skills. First master the glider, then the motor just pushes you. So it's all about controlling the glider. Teresa here, doing an awesome job. You see the butt behind the feet. That's one of the biggest critical things that you don't see at other classes. You see people standing lock-legged with their body weight on their feet, and that's wrong. You want to have the body weight hanging from the glider. Otherwise, you got it wrong and backwards because there's nothing loading the glider. So it's not about keeping the glider up, as you hear so many people talk about. It's all about controlling the altitude of your butt using the glider. Pull the brakes till you slide, and then just ease off till you stop sliding and keep your butt down. If you fall backwards, add brakes. If it's dragging you, slowly ease off the brakes. A little more brake, lean butt, make it carry your butt with the glider. Because if you can do this, it's the exact same skill it takes to make a perfect launch and landing. After all, what's a launch and landing? Controlling the altitude of your body using the glider. So it's kind of important to learn that skill before you try and launch your land. Otherwise it gets really ugly. So here's Trevor putting that skill into demonstration. Wild, crazy air, boom. Controls the altitude of his body perfectly with the glider. There's only one school in the world that really teaches this because this takes an incredible amount of time to really master. So we have almost 20 mile an hour winds, anywhere from about 15 to 20 mile an hour winds today. Teresa's is flying or kiting on a 10 square meter. That's another huge thing in super training that just doesn't exist with other schools is we have the right gear. So we have gliders everywhere from eight square meter clear up to 35 square meter in two square meter increments. So every single day, doesn't matter the wind, your body weight or your skill level, we always have the perfect size glider to make sure you can practice correctly. Because if you don't have the right size glider, you can't even practice. So pull brakes until you slide. Now watch how much brake she pulls. Pull, pull, pull. And bam. So now the glider's too small. Hands up, that's a stall. Hands up, run, brakes. So the goal is to have a glider that where you pull about six to 10 inches of brake, you're getting drug. If you're not getting drug, you don't have the lift to properly control the altitude of your body because it won't hold your body. So it's very critical that you have very close to exactly the correct size glider for training. Once you get to flying, it's different because you run and you produce that lift by running. But when you're practicing, obviously only an idiot's gonna try running 11 miles an hour for eight hours a day for 10 days straight. So it's absolutely critical that you got the right size glider so that you pull brake, pull brakes now, winds back up, there we go. So she pulled about six inches and she's getting drug. That means the glider is exactly the correct size with this wind. The wind's up and down, so you always wanna err on the side of having just a little bit small so that when the wind goes up, you're not getting drugged too much, but hands up on this glider, this glider will do 60 miles an hour, so the, uh, depending on the weight on it, and so there's a big margin for error of safety, so pull brakes, I am. Now, look at the altitude of the butt, hold brakes, hold brakes, a little more brake, keep the feet in front of you. Notice her butt is not going up and down. That's actually better than expert level because most people fall down, they get stood up, they fall down. When they start, you don't have that skill to control the altitude of the butt. This is a huge thing. When you're looking for training, you have to know what to look for because what the heck are they actually teaching you? Most people will have you kite for as little as 20 minutes to maybe a couple hours, and then they're chucking you in the sky going, oh yeah, you're ready to fly. But you have no, absolutely no ability whatsoever to control the glider. Now, the other thing that's critical about controlling the altitude of the butt uh, with your glider 
is it's exactly the same skill to prevent a collapse. So if you do not have this skill right here, you cannot prevent a collapse because you simply don't have the reflexes. So it is life and death critical that you get with a real actual instructor that will take the time to make sure you have the correct skills before you leave the ground. And there are very, very few, actually I don't know of any others that will actually do it and teach this skill, let alone have the honesty to tell you no and not put you in the sky until you do actually develop the correct skills to keep yourself safe. Because in the air, there's no such thing as perfectly smooth air, it doesn't exist. Anyone who says that is only showing their ignorance and complete absurdity because conditions change constantly when you're flying. You fly 10 miles, you can get everywhere from zero wind to 10 mile an hour wind going one way to 15 mile an hour wind going the other way. So conditions change and things happen. So you don't belong in the sky if you don't have control of the glider and the ability to active pilot the wing. If the wind drops, she simply adds brake, moves backwards, and replaces the loss of airspeed with ground speed automatically. But here, the wind is consistent enough that she's able to stand there and just practice. A little more brake, more brake, bam, feet a little farther out, bam. Right there, we like the butt fairly close to knee level because, ever do a tug of war? Well, it's impossible to slide and do a tug of war while standing straight up and down. You can't. If you start doing a tug of war, you naturally have to lean way backwards. And the only way your feet are gonna slide is if your butt is very close to the altitude of your knees. So if you get hit with a big gust, your butt needs to naturally be low so that you can slide, maintain perfect control. Add brakes and slide. Brakes. And now we've got a lull, hands up, bam. Notice she caught the stall right there. She stalled it, caught the stall immediately. Didn't have to actually tell her. Again, another absolutely critical reflex. And it comes from hours and hours and hours of practice. How do you prevent or react to a stall? Well, you shouldn't have to think about it. You should do it so many times through the course of super training, literally thousands and thousands of times that you do it automatically without even thinking about it.